All right, so the first thing that you want to do is to get your basic head shape right. So it is generally kind of an egg shape, a little bit tapered at the bottom, and kind of generally an egg shape this direction with a little bit tapered at the bottom again. You always want to check your measurements and check them again and again and again. So you want to check and make sure that your height is right, that the width front to back is correct, and that the width from side to side is correct at the widest point, you know, just to start off with. Once you've got that and your basic shape correct, um, you want to double check it with your photographs and make sure that that is kind of roughly correct as far as your shapes go. And you can do that by holding your photograph behind the piece and lining up does the forehead slant back? Does the chin come back? What is the shape of the top of the head? What is the shape of the back of your head? You can do the same thing with a photograph from the front. Like you can tell the difference between these two photographs, that the cheekbone and this one would come out quite a bit as opposed to being more vertical. So once you've got that basic shape correct and the measurements correct, you're going to want to find the center point. Um, center point up and down and the center point from side to side. And uh, you just want to kind of go back and forth with your calipers until you get to a point that you're right there and make a little vertical mark. That tells me where my vertical is. And then I'm going to do the top to the bottom and find that center point. Just get a little bit off there. So I've got my X marks the spot where the center is. It is a good idea, and sometimes it's a good idea to redraw this periodically on your head to mark where your center line is, where your vertical center line is. And that will help you to see where the right and the left side are and help you get the nose straight and help you get the mouth marked into the right spot. So, if you're having trouble seeing if your right and left are identical, sometimes it's a good idea to put a vertical between the two. And that makes it easier for me to see that this jaw, for example, is lower than that jaw. So once you've got your vertical, you want to do your horizontal. And if the face is in a pose where the head is vertical and your table is level, you can actually use a level to get your horizontal. And these are kind of like base markers to tell you where to put things. Okay, so now I've got my vertical and my horizontal in place. I'm going to mark out where my eyes are. Um, so you want to measure your eye sockets. Most people's eye sockets are about an inch and a half. That's just, this is half life. That means that the eye socket's going to be about three quarters of an inch. So you have an eye between your eyes. So you always want to mark the verticals where you're giving yourself enough room between your eyes. And that is probably one of the major mistakes, is not giving yourself enough room between your eyes. So I'm going to mark the outside edge of both eyes. Okay. You notice how rounded the front of this face is? Your skull itself is quite rounded. So the skull itself is quite rounded. The, chair, the cheeks are squared off. The skull itself is quite rounded, so you want that face to be quite rounded. So then you're going to measure what the size of the vertical of your eye sockets is and make that into half. And that guys are a little over an inch and a half. So this is going to be a little over an inch and a half. And you want to center it on your center line. Okay? And to keep them level, you can actually, again, use the level across that bottom line to make sure that you have the bottoms of your eye socket level. And that it helps you get, keep from getting one eye too high and one eye too low. Now, it is really common, you know, in your body to have one eye a little high or one eye a little bit low. Um, you want to probably make yourself a little more symmetrical than you actually are. 
we have a tendency to exaggerate that. So once you have your eyes marked into place, you want to take and cut your eyeballs out. And you're going to make them fairly deep. Because ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to put your eyeballs, you're going to roll up little round balls and put your eyeballs back in where you took them out from. Now, I'm carving out a round hole. Your eye sockets themselves are generally not quite round. Usually, they're a little bit more squarish. Um, and often, there's kind of a corner in some area. Usually, it's that lower area. So once you've got the eye sockets carved out, um, don't worry about shaping them too much in the beginning. Because right off the start, you notice how there's a dip in the nose bone here, you're going to take and pinch out the amount for the dip in your nose bone, okay? And then, if you notice on the skull, the center of the nose is in front of where the corner of the eye socket is. So for quite a few of you, especially if your face was too flat, you're going to take and pinch out the corners of your eye sockets to make sure that they are behind where your eyes are, okay? So from this point, you want to take and measure your jawbone. So you're going to measure from your chin to the back of the chin. Um, with the caliper, you're going to mark that into half and find where that point is. So on this guy, for example, he is about three and a half inches. So that would be two and quarters. And usually your right jaw and your left jaw are the same. Okay. So you want to figure out where that jawbone stops. Usually it's right around the bottom of the eye socket. And this area back in here, you're going to remove. So it's kind of like this little tumor that you're going to remove on the back of your head. And you just take and gently slice it out. All right. You can see right there, by doing that, pinching a little bit off the back of his neck, it's starting to look just a little bit more skull-like just from doing that. So you want to work on both sides at the same time. You know, work on your right side, work on your left side. And don't just get stuck in one spot. That will help keep things more balanced, um, definitely. And when you see that they're, especially in this beginning stage, when you see that something is asymmetrical, like there's a, this side is a little fuller than that side, you want to go back and make sure that you make it more symmetrical, but check it against your photographs to make sure that that's correct, okay? So from this point, you have this depression in the corners of your eyes. You want to take your thumbs and swipe out where that depression is. That'll also help reveal your nose. Um, this, that center point, sometimes it's a good idea to put that back. So you have your measurements where the bottom of your nose should be and where your mouth should be. Usually your forehead is about one-third, your nose is about one-third, and your mouth, the center of your mouth, is halfway between there. And that lets me know that here's where the bottom of my nose is going to be, here's where the center of my mouth is going to be, okay? So I've got the bottom of my jawline defined. You want to shape it according to the way your face is shaped. You want to shape your profile according to the way your profile is shaped. So I'm going to remove a little bit to the jaw in here, and I'm going to find where my cheekbones are. So you have this depression across the top, right in, right in here, along the bottom of your eye socket, usually. And it's different from each person. But you'll have this big depression right there on the top. So you want to go ahead and take and cut that out. Uh, don't over-remove in there. It's really easy to think that that is something that's really deep. 
it's not that overwhelmingly deep, but it's definitely there. So once I've got that, I then want to look and figure out where the bottom of my eyes, my jawline is. And so sometimes you can kind of tell from your photograph, you want to feel the top line, and is it more horizontal, and then the bottom line, what's the angle of that bottom line? So over here, this bottom line is kind of angled like that. So I'm going to take and remove some material in there. It will come out from underneath on my jawline, okay? And when you do one side, you always want to go through and do the same thing to the other side. So always make sure you match the two of them up, okay? And you can kind of see where a good sharp paring knife is really handy in this process. cheekbones, one's a little bigger than the other, but I have my cheekbones, I have my eye sockets, I have, I want to start building my nose out. Don't worry about building it to uh, being hollow, but just get that nose bone shape there in place. Don't worry about what the end looks like, okay, and then start rounding out where your teeth are, okay, and you may end up needing to add a little bit of material in where the teeth are. Make sure that you round it off. If you look at the inside of this guy's jaw, you can see that that shape is rounded, not flat. You can also see that the cheekbones themselves are kind of squared out, but the forehead is really rounded. That's why I had you take the photographs from the top as well as the bottom. And then the jaw is kind of triangular in shape. So from this point, now that you've got kind of a basic skull, the trick is making it look more like your own skull. So, you know, what's the shape of your brow ridge? Do you have a good depression in here? Is it real um, furrowed? Is it, do you have heavy brows that you need to add some material into? Um, what's the angle of your cheekbones? Where does this change happen? Um, you want to get a little bit more of a depression back in here for where you're going to put the muscles back in on your cheeks as well. And make sure that you've got all your shapes right and really go back and forth and check them with your photographs to make sure that that's right as well. And so, I mean, this is just kind of a rough draft of the skull. You're going to go through and refine the skull so it looks more and more like yourself as opposed to someone else. And that's the most important thing, is really getting that bone structure so that it looks like your bone structure and not your next door neighbor's bone structure.